Well, hello guys, my name is Philip. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be continuing our Amazon budget build by building our links. Now, before we get too much further, I just wanted to say thank you very much for joining me for yet another video. And I really hope that this benefits you in some way. If it does, do please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription, that would really help me out. Now with that out of the way, what you see in front of you is more of our Amazon budget crawler build. Today, we'll... well hello guys, this is Philip from the future. I just wanted to bring to your attention that in this video you're going to see the axles as well as the links on the table. And my original plan was to build both the links and the axles. However, when I got to editing, I realized how much trouble I had building these links and it was really making the video quite long. So what you'll notice in this video is that we're just building the links and in the next episode we'll be building the axles. Well, that's it, and I'll let you get back to your regularly scheduled program. Now the tools that we're gonna need today are gonna be some sort of Allen wrench, an adjustable wrench such as this one right here, our Loctite, and of course, some kind of driver. Now, if you've seen my channel before, you've seen this tool. This is a DeWalt power driver. This has a gyroscopic technology in it, and I really enjoy using this. If you push down the button, you'll notice that the tool does nothing but buzz. When you rotate the tool, the tool will begin responding to your inputs. So this is a pretty neat little tool to get your jobs done. I think for the purpose of this video today, we'll start by building the links. Now you can use a traditional pair of pliers to hold on to your link while you're threading on your plastic rod end, but that does mar up your link, and that's something you want to try to avoid. Now if you use the adjustable crescent wrench, as a sort of holder for your rod, you'll notice that when we go to thread on our rod end here, it will hold that rod end in place so that you can um, twist on your link. Now, none of these rod ends are threaded, so you do have to cut threads as you turn. So this does require some level of patience. You also wanna make sure that this is threading on straight so you'll see that that rod end is threading on pretty straight and true here. Once you get your first couple of threads started, you can then grab a Allen wrench into the end of your rod end here and use it as sort of a T handle to rotate. Now, once again, looking at the quality of these parts and pieces, this is not a very good quality rod end, and it's fighting me to cut threads. Now that we have the plastic rod in threaded onto this shaft, I did have to pull this off camera as that was quite difficult to get threaded on. Now we'll do the other side. Now you'll notice when I'm gripping this shaft, I'm gripping it in the bend of that rod end so that it will hold that rod end in place while you twist on. So it will hold the rod rather in place while you twist on the rod end. Now you always have patience with these as you're threading them on because they can be quite challenging to thread, especially when you have um, rod ends that are kind of a gummy plastic material. These are pretty flexible and they don't like to thread as you're threading them in. Now we finally have those threaded onto the rod here. And I must say, I'm not very pleased with the quality of this plastic that's here. I really am concerned that as I'm using this, this will pull out when it, um, when it takes an impact. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how that goes. Now you'll notice that I did not use the hexagonal shape that's on the rod end to thread those in place. In my experience, those always round out whenever you're trying to thread them on. 
So that's something that I would not advise using if you can avoid that. In an effort to try and save my sanity a little bit and assembling these links, we're gonna try a little bit different tactic. So what I have done here is I've got a four millimeter screw. And since these rod ends have a four millimeter thread on them, we're gonna pre-thread these rod ends. That should make life a little easier on us in assembling these, these rod ends. So going to take our power driver here and going to thread that screw into this rod end. Careful not to punch through. We, want, we don't want to destroy the rod end. And now that that is pre-threaded, let's see if this makes our life easy. So once again, holding the rod end in the bend. And that, my friends, was much easier to thread that on. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna finish these rod ends up off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-thread these rod ends so that it just makes all of our lives easier to assemble. Okay, now that we have all these rod ends all finished, I must say that this was much easier pre-threading them. Although I'm still not pleased with the quality of the rod end itself, I do worry that it will pull out after uh, installing. The pre-threading certainly generates a bit more confidence in their ability not to break. Well guys, as we wrap up this video, I'm sure you can see how much trouble I had building these links, but we do have them built and ready for installation. And if you have benefited from this video or enjoyed this video, do please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription, as well as don't forget to hit that bell if you want to see the new content in the future. Well, that'll wrap it up for this one, and I hope to see you in the next one.